unless you want your model to stare into the depths of our souls, it's going to need to blink. And if you're like me, you want that nice layered complex eye look with all the pretty physics, eyelashes, and tiny small details. Today, I'm going to show you how to rig your eyes and get the perfect blinking action so that they're ready for adding physics and silly expressions later on. First, let's go over all the parts of my eye. As you can see, there's a lot. I made sure to make every eyelash on top and bottom separate, the top eyelash line is separate from the top eyelid, and the iris is split into multiple parts. This will help make the eye look nice and glossy. In total, there's 23 parts here. You don't need all these parts, of course you can have less, or more, but I wanted a dramatic eye that was capable of having a lot of physics, so the more parts the better. Over in Life 2D, you can see all my parts here in their folders, along with the very obvious lack of a second eye. This is on purpose. Since I wanted the eyes to move identical, I'm only going to rig one eye and then copy and paste it to the other side. This will also save you hours of work. Additionally, even though this eye is on the left side, you need to rig it as the right eye. That's because Live2D, VBridger, and VTube Studio work on the basis that the right is the model's right and not your right. So from here on out, right is left and left is right. It's very confusing, but if you need to, don't be scared to put a post-it note on your monitor with the label to help you remember which side is which. To start, we're going to need to mesh all of the pieces. And you're going to notice that some pieces I manually mesh while others are auto meshed. There's no exact rule for this and sometimes I auto mesh and then while I'm rigging decide I need to manually mesh it and go back and fix it. In general, I try to follow this rule. If it's going to move a lot or have complicated physics, manually mesh it. If it's only going to move a little or is less important piece of the design, auto mesh it. In this case, I manually mesh the eyebrow, eyelid, and eyelash lines because in blinking motion, it'll be deformed a lot. So I need to have good precise control over the art mesh, and this can only happen if I control where the mesh grid is myself. On the other hand, things like tiny eyelashes or the floating highlight specks on the iris won't be deformed that much, so they can be auto meshed. Honestly, it's a bit of a guessing game, and sometimes I don't get it right the first time. Don't be disheartened if you go back and change the way you mesh something later on. You're not alone, I do it too. Once everything is meshed, I like to sort out my clip masks. In this case, I'm clipping my iris, the highlights of my iris, the pupil, and the sclera shadow all to the sclera, or the white of the eye. This means that everything will sit nicely on the white and will auto hide themselves as the sclera disappears from view. Next is my favorite step, putting all the pieces in a container deformer. I know in the free version you have limited deformers, so you might want to skip this step if you're using the free license. But if you're still on your 45 day pro trial or use the full license like me, make a container deformer. Basically, I take everything that goes with the eye and put it in one big deformer. This not only groups them nicely in my list so I can find everything, but will also become super handy for when you need to copy and paste the eye to the other side later on or just wanna make large global edits if you need to make a TV toggle or some other odd expression toggle. Right now, the container might seem odd or weird, but when you get further into your rig and you're just wanting to select all the eye bits really quickly out of a list of like 300 deformers, you'll be thankful you have it, trust me. From there, I make more specific deformers based on how each part of the eye is going to move. One for the top eyelid, one for the iris, one for the bottom eyelid, the eyebrow, and finally the sclera. Before we go any further, let's talk about parameters. Live2D comes with default parameters, and you'll want to use these as they will automatically work with tools like VBridger and VTube Studio. The two we will be using are IR Open and IR Smile. We will use IL Open and IL Smile later on once we have copy pasted the eye to the other side of the face, so don't worry about those. IR Open is for blinking, and IR Smile is a type of expression. It'll mean your eyes will curve upwards when you smile automatically and it's a nice little extra to make your model look a little bit more realistic and alive. Let's start with IR open. This parameter is set from zero to one and think of one as being open and zero being closed. And that's how we're going to rig it. Now, if you just take the top lid deformer, put two keyframes on I open and then move it down, you'll see everything get squished, which is a thousand percent not what we wanted. Instead, we're going to be rigging every single art mesh individually. Normally, I hate rigging the art mesh directly and I always advise against it and tell you to make deformers instead, except for the eyes. I rig these art meshes directly. 
It's just easier and I'm too lazy to make deformers for so many small and fiddly things. If you have more energy than me, make all of them and be the rigger I aspire to be. So let's start with the top eyelash line. Make two keyframes and select the zero keyframe. Now create a temporary path deform and move the eyelid down into place. You'll want to move it just below the bottom of the pupil and you want to make sure the corners line up with where they started. So it doesn't look like your eyelid is traveling down your face. Then doing the same thing with the bottom eyelid, make two keyframes that eye open and with path to form, move it up to meet the top lash line. Pro tip, if you hold shift while dragging the red circles, they'll move perfectly in a straight line. This stops the lid from looking like it's shifting to the left or right as it travels. And now as you move the parameter slider, you can see your eye starting to blink. I go back occasionally and tweak stuff and you'll see me doing that throughout this video, especially as I start to add more detail, but now we only have 21 more pieces to go. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> From here, I'm moving on to the top eyelid with the same path to form a method as the eyelash lines. And this is one of the parts you'll see me adjust a lot. Because it's getting deformed so heavily, a lot of it tends to get blurry and wonky. And in a perfect world, I'd separate out the crease lines from the shadow. But I also keep reminding myself that I am looking at this super close. And in reality, my model will be much smaller on my screen and blinks happen very fast. So any small blips will be pretty impossible to see. If you can't get it perfectly smooth either, you're not alone and don't stress about it. Your model is more than an eyelid and no one will notice. Next, it's time for some magic. Select the sclera and add two keyframes. Set it to zero and squish the whole thing down into a flat line. I know this is weird, just trust me. Move the line to match the close eyelid with a path deformer. Bend it into a nice arch shape to match your eyelids. And now open the eye. <gasps> Look at that. Look at the magic that just occurred on your screen. Yeah, I don't know why it works perfectly. I can't tell you why it works perfectly, but it does, and I love it, and I'm not questioning it. Now we move on to the iris. This is one of the few times we will add keyframes onto the deformer rather than the art mesh. This is because we want all the layers to move as a unit. And when we add emote toggles or physics like bouncing and movement later on, it'll automatically match your existing eyes. So add your two keyframes, and then on zero, we're going to move the iris down just a little. This gives your eye more life and feels less stagnant and awkwardly piercing when it's on your screen. You don't need much movement, but even a little bit helps. Plus, for bouncing physics, this will give something for the physics to react to. Finally, rig up the shadow. This is a simple multiply layer that just adds some depth and a 3D feel to the eye. And after some additional tweaks as I have more pieces on screen, I can start working on the final tricky bit, the eyelid corner. I always struggle with this piece as it scrunches up diagonally, but to help it look smoother, I add keyframes in the middle of the zero to one scale using this small dot button right here. This helps me control the shape it's moving in rather than the PC simply guessing how I want it to move. I try to not add too many extra dots, but it's always fine to add a couple. From here on out, I'm going to speed things up as I just go through all the eyelashes one by one and it's going to be a lot of the same thing. Set two keyframes and then move them in line with the eyelid. One important trick I do though is that at the halfway mark where it's hard to see the lash line, I add two keyframes close together and move their draw order up by one. Depending on your file setup and layer order, you may not need to do this, but it's a good trick to learn nonetheless. This means that my eyelashes always stay on top of my eyelid and I don't have an awkward, harsh transition line. Even if you don't need it for your eye, you might need to know this later down the road for clothing or some special prop. In summary, everything from transparency to draw order can be controlled by keyframes. Don't be scared to use them. With the eye blinking nicely, we're ready to move on to eye smile. Like I said before, this is a form of expression toggle that adds another level of realism to your model. This form will simulate the bottom of your eye curving upwards as if our cheeks were big and full with a large smile. So if we select the eye smile parameter and add two keyframes on the bottom lid, we can start getting to work. Hold on a second. I'm going to pause here to explain something that might get a bit confusing to people new to rigging. What I'm about to do is something I call parameter stacking. This means when I have the eye smile toggle set to zero or it's turned off, eye open uses the parameters we just rigged. However, when we turn eye smile on by setting it to one, the eye opens parameter is going to use completely different sets of movements. With it off, the eye closes naturally in a downward curve. 
with an on, the eye closes with an upward curve. That's because I have multiple sets of data saved to the same keyframes in I open. And thus, my parameter is stacked with multiple sets of data. Parameter stacking. Let's go back to the bottom eyelid that we had just made two keyframes for on the I smile parameter. Remember, zero is off, no smile, and one is on, smile. So we have to set it to one and then start our work. If we accidentally left at zero and started moving the art mesh, we would delete all the work we previously did. If you do make this mistake, Control Z is your best friend. So now we're going to do this for every layer of the eye. The only section you probably won't need to change is the iris, since that typically moves the same unless your model has a non-human eye and you want something different. Always remember, set eye smile to zero, then make two keyframes, then move it to one and start your work. Test once you're done with each layer, and catch mistakes early and you'll save yourself a massive headache later on. With both eye smile and eye open complete, it's time to get a full set of eyes. Select all the layers and deformers in the eye container and right click and pick copy. Then control P to paste it. This should make a giant duplicate container with all of your layers. Quickly rename it to the IL container so you don't get confused and select all the art meshes in the IL container. Right click again and select reflect. This is the reflect menu where you have a few options. In the top, we have the global reflect settings. This will reflect your mesh based off of your overall canvas. Since we want it to go horizontally to the other side of her face, pick reflect horizontally. Reflect vertically would put her eye on her foot, which we don't really want. The other box is for parameters. We don't want to tick anything here. And instead, we should leave it completely blank since all of our eye movements are up and down. If we had left and right movements like jewelry or hair, then this is where we do these settings. But for now, leave them blank and click OK. Finally, I like to reflect the inner iris highlights one final time so they match the highlights on the other side. I think this just looks more natural, but that's up to personal preference. Other eyes, we have two complete eyes. I'd recommend renaming everything in your IL container to IL and not IR, which you can do here in the inspector menu. But if you enjoy living in chaos, you can skip that. And instead we need to edit our parameters one final time. As you can see, IR controls both eyes and IL controls nothing. <laughs> Some people may prefer to have one eye control both, but I wanted mine controlled by each eye individually. So I could do things like wink. To split the eye parameters, right click on the IR open and click select. This will highlight every art mesh and deformer currently linked to this one specific parameter. Since we don't want to change anything with the right eye, hold control and click off all the right eye art meshes. This is where renaming things would be helpful and that's why I suggest to do it. Once you have the left eye parts remaining, right click on the eye open box again and this time choose change. This will open a menu box where you can move all of your data and settings to a new parameter. In this case, pick IL open. Now you can see all of your work is controlled by the correct parameter. Finally, let's do the same with the I smile parameters. On IR smile, right click this box and choose select. Use control to deselect all of the right eye art layers. And then going back to this drop down menu, pick change. This time move everything to the IL smile. And now everything is controlled by each individual parameter, saving us hours of work. Finally, we want to be able to see our model link automatically in Live 2D to make sure everything works properly. To do this, click on the hamburger here and choose settings for eye blinking and lip sync. Here we have a list of all of our existing parameters. For the eye blinking, we're going to want to pick both eye open parameters and click OK. Now, when you go into the physics and scene blending menu, your model will auto blink. This is amazing for testing to make sure things all move okay. And don't worry, this won't override your actual blinking in VTube Studio when you're streaming. VTube Studio does have an auto blink setting, which will use these settings if you want it to, but otherwise it'll match your actual eye movement. So you have no reason to worry. And with that, our eye blink is complete. We still need to get our eyes to move with the head turn, but that will be another Visio as it's quite difficult to set up and I'm trying to keep these shorter and more to the point. If you're curious how long this took me in actual time, it was about two hours total. And that's with a lot of practice. So don't get discouraged if it takes you a while on your first eye. 
This is a more complex style, but I know you can do it and it's going to turn out great. So tell me, is there anything else you want to learn how to do in Live 2D? Leave a comment below or ask me live on Twitch where I stream four times a week. I'm here to make sure your VTuber comes to life and want to help you through all the hard bits. Until next time, bye!